Aloha, everyone. We had quite a few sell signals on an end-of-day basis today. Had quite a few stops hit also, but not too many. Um, not as many as hit on Thursday and Friday, but still the pattern remains the same. There's more sell signals than long signals lately. Nothing is really changing on that end, but also at the same time, Long signals, while they're not necessarily working that great, they're still working higher. Very few are failing. I did have one fail today immediately. EGBN ripped through both of my stops by an end-of-day basis and only closed below one. But So that's just it. So one triggered on an end-of-day basis, one half stop. Everything else worked. So let's say that everything would have failed and EGBN would have been the only one that worked. Well, then tonight there's no new long positions. Definitely no new speculative long positions. But everything worked. All the speculative longs, all the regular longs, they didn't run. But they're holding in and or were up slightly or down slightly. So we keep plugging along with new long signals as long as my model remains under a buy mode. As long as we remain near the highs. Um, you know, I still think the market wants to pull back more, but until this turns into a really nasty sell-off where we start really breaking down on huge volume, I'm going to continue to buy stocks as a trigger. And this evening, I have three high-quality long positions, so let's get it started. All three come from the highest quality can slim and perfect speculator scans. There were a few stocks that flagged in my secondary and tertiary scans, but none of them are really good enough to go long that are quality. Speculative side, though, I have another handful of speculative names that I'll post for platinum members later this Maui evening that are right at support. And if they work, they offer over five to one reward rate risk ratios that they can get back up to just even the recent highs if they can get back up to old resistance levels we're looking at 10 to 1 on some of these names so as long as this is the kind of setup we have with a market that's overall trending up with a fed that's friendly with a yield curve that's not inverted i'm buying the dip so first kind of dip by plnt plnt is a cancel quality stock been watching it for over a year trying to get a good entry and see if it works maybe this one will work the stock is pulled back right to the 50-day moving average it's printing a bullish candle over candle hammer reversal price bar heavier volume and my momentum and trending oscillators are confirming now plnt has earnings in six sessions five sessions starting tomorrow so they are a week week away but like most of the new long positions i'm taking if it doesn't work immediately we got a cut loss level right below so i want to get long plnt it's a cancel quality stock not confirmed to anywhere else two percent of my account capital limit order 2617 the high of the day since it's not extended the first and only cut loss level right there 25.55. This stock hits 25.54. I'll be all out of PLNT. I got a week to see if it works. If it doesn't work in a week, hopefully it'll hit the stop and I'll be out. If not, I guess we're gambling into earnings. But with a chart pattern like this, I would think that earnings are going to be positive overall, especially since the stock isn't running into earnings and is actually pulling back and or consolidating into earnings. It increases the odds that it'll be successful. But I'd rather see PLNT either work right away or fail right away. But 2% of my account capital, 2617, the one cut loss level right there, 2555. So that's the first one. That's probably the best overall setup because we're right at the 5, 10, 20, and 50 day moving averages with price bouncing right off the October lows. So everything's lined up there. But the safer long position probably is PT, PETS because following a gap up post earnings, it's pulled back with volume declining after the initial pullback session. And now it's starting the, my with my oscillators, my momentum trending oscillators, it's starting to round and curl higher right here at the August, September, and October support. This time it has green bop, and while volume isn't above average, you can see it picked up from the day before. And like I said, my momentum and trending oscillators are confirming. So once again, this probably has the best chance to rally back, and if it can get to its old highs, that's a nice little price move, and then hopefully get back to its July highs and then break out to new highs. But, you know, that's getting a little ahead of ourselves. First, pets has to work. So pets, I want to get long. Once again, this was only in my cancel quality scan, so it's 2% of my account capital. Limit order, 35.89. The one and only cut loss level is right there, 34.25. You could, I guess, also use all the way back here, 24.53, because we're not risking that much if you want to split it up half and half. But this thing should work right away. With this curl and this momentum um, trend change off the low and the curling action, the bullish hammer candle pattern right at the supports, levels with volume higher uh, this thing needs to move up immediately or move up consolidate then move up again i definitely don't want to see it break these lows so once again 
3589 moves below 3425 it hits 3424 that's it. The stock fails, and we're out for small losses. Just like on PLNT, we're only risking about 1.5% uh, with PLNT, and we're risking with PSMT, oh, excuse me, <laughs> with pets, we're risking about 2.5%. So we're not risking too much to know that we're wrong to potentially get greater than 4 to 5 to 1 moves higher to the old highs. And with PLNT, I'm looking for a measured move similar from the move from April to September. And with pets, I'm hopefully, if it can get going, looking for a measured move also from March here to July. And then the final high quality long position is a little bit more risky. EHTH. It's bouncing right off the 50-day moving average. It's also bouncing right off the 20-day moving average. So it's not extended from the two key moving averages I tracked but it is extended short term from its 5 and 10 day moving average thanks to an initial downtrend heading into earnings. A big gap down on the earnings, an engulfing bullish full body candle pattern taking out four total days of price action on huge volume and a pocket pivot point signal signifies that the stock trend has changed back higher. The follow through to that action with today's price move on above average volume and BOP even increasing. The momentum and trending oscillators I follow, RSI 14 and MACD 26.12.9, are all curling higher. So I think it's a little riskier, like I said, because it being extended from the 5.10. So you don't want to pay more than the close, 24.90. So 24.90 will be my limit order. First cut loss level, right there, 23.41. It moves below 23.41, I'll be out of half. My final cut loss level, right here, 21.65. It goes below 21.65. I'll be out of half. You could also, and I might, since earnings are out of the way, I don't have to worry about earnings in this one. I'm clear and good to go. And because it is extended, though I like the chart short term, this thing sh more than likely with this market is going to want to back and fill. I'm thinking I might give it a little bit, be a little bit more loose, have a th three stops, 2341, so 2340, 2165, 2164, and then a final crazy one at the 1910 lows. Now, obviously, if it fails 2341 and 2165 before touching 1910, depending on how it fails, I'll be moving up half of whatever remains stop-wise or all of it before the 1910 level comes into play. But considering it's a pretty bullish reversal post-earnings, I might want to give this stock some room to back and fill and work higher since we are overbought. Now, if all these long signals fail tomorrow, including the handful of speculative long signals and the long signals from Friday session start failing, then we're done with new long signals. We're going to let this market keep on pulling back. It probably will have further to go before we start getting along again. But right now, the market pulled back on lower volume today. The NASDAQ 100 was up, but the rest of the tape pulled back on lower volume than on Friday session. So that's a small positive. Right now, the pullback's orderly but we're nowhere near being in the safe and all clear zone. The market is still overbought. We still don't, still don't have a curl turn in the oscillators off any kind of oversold or 50 RSI line on most of these averages. The NASDAQ has done that, and it appears that we've gone from the Russell 2000 to the Dow Jones Industrial Average, the NASDAQ 100 with leadership, but we're getting thinner and thinner and thinner with market leadership. Market breadth is starting to show a negative divergence to the price action in the NASDAQ and S&P 500. So all this will need to be monitored into the future. All right, everyone. I'll see you in the chat room during the pre-market on Tuesday. Aloha.